uh, neural and neuronal control of the heart. So now the, con the controls of the heart activity uh, using the vasomotor centers. The, the, the neural is mainly uh, controlled by the vasomotor, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nerve innovations, whereas the humoral is a huge new topic, which I'll be also discussing. So the vasomotor receptors, they're going to be located bilaterally in the middle of the in the lower pawns of the uh, brain stem, I believe. So now uh, with these vasoreceptors, they are they are connected with the main thing, which is the baroreceptors. The baroreceptors are the chemoreceptors. They carry from the chemoreceptors, they go all the way. So their pathway, so the vaso, uh, vasomotor, what do they stimulate? What do they control? These are centers. So what do they call? They can control vascular constriction and the, they control the um, the heart rate. So these are the main two things to be noted. They can they they control. Oops. So they, 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 they can control the vascular constriction and they control the heart rate, heart activity. So uh, now, uh, so uh, now uh, which one controls which one? Well, and which one is a stimulatory inhibitory? When there, when there is a, so in the sensory, so first area which I want to be focusing, as you know, vasomotor area can be divided into the sensory, the sensory area, and also there are parasympathetic and sympathetic, so I want to start with the sensory. Sensory is basically, um, so the sensory area is the one that controls both. The, um, the, the sensory area basically gets from the baroreceptors, they receive um, the impulses from the baroreceptors to the chemoreceptors. They send this to the through the the through the the, through the nerves glow of loss of pharyngeal or the the vagus nerve. They send it to the solarius tract, and then from here they send it to the solarius nucleus, so solarius nucleus, and over here they go to the vasomotor centers, and from here there is a response created. So one of the main responses can be a, a sympathetic fibers. So sympathetic nerve fibers they can go to the spinal cord, and then they can innervate the arterial arteries and venules. And over here, they can cause vas vascular constriction, increasing systematic resistance, increasing arterial blood pressure, or they can have a, and, and addition to that, they have a impact on, they can, with sympathetic uh, nerve fibers, they can also innervate, guess what? And apart from, apart from arterials, um, arteries and uh, the venules, sympathetic nerve fibers, they can also innervate what? Well, you get, well, you guessed it, they can also innervate, um, they can also innervate the heart, so they can heart and the beta one adrenoreceptic receptor and the adrenorenic receptor. I have it written over here. Just give me a second. Sorry. So the main, the main beta one adrenoreceptor, and this increases heart rate, increases contractibility, and that's about it. And then for the, uh, and conversely, for the parasympathetic route, um, if there is a the baroreceptors, they they give a stimulate, they give a the transmit a impulse, which says that the there is a very high amount of device con constriction, very high blood pressure. So then, therefore, they can be a vital, vital they can parasympathetic um, area. They can send impulses. Um, the parasympathetic area of the vasomotor uh, center they inhibit the sympathetic signals. They send signals to a decent dorsal motor nu nuclei of the vagus nerves, and which um, which transmit and they, they they transmit parasympathetic nerves to the heart, and this causes a inhibition of the sympathetic activity. So it decreases heart rate, and it also it decreases heart rate, and also vascular restricted. And uh, decreases heart rate. Not only decreases heart rate, but it also causes a decrease of heart rate. But it also causes a decrease in contractibility. I believe so. It will be a decrease and decrease in heart uh, contractibility. So now, what's the, the, the main thing? Sympathetic and uh, parasympathetic. So these parasympathetic and parasympathetic is going to be done well. It can be innervated by the beta one adrenoreceptic. So basically, the sympathetic is going to be the activation of the afferent nerve fibers to the heart and the atria to 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 do what to so to to constrict. And over here, the beta one adrenoreceptor and the atria and the ventricle. And what does this cause? Well, they can innervate the atria and ventricle. What does this cause? Well, it causes increased heart rate. So increased heart rate is known as chronotropic effect. Increasing contractibility is known as inotropic effect. Increasing relaxation is going to be known as Lystrotropic tropic effect, and the last but not least one is going to be increase in uh, um, vasodilation, uh, increase in conduction velocity, which is known as a dromotropic tropic effect. Uh, overall, so, so sympathetic activation is to increase the cardiac output, increase systematic resistance, increase arterial blood flow, and and uh, so so the uh, heart effect of the sympathetic is going to be to increase the um, increase the chronotropic and cardiac output. The systematic is going to be to increase the overall uh, resistance and the blood pressure. So now, increasing the para the the parasympathetic causes the release of acetal 
این فیز پرسپیدمیک ای کازز دی ریلیز این افستال کولین این دیس افستال کولین ای کن دی آرایت ویگر سترم دیس کن گو این دیس کن گو این دیس کن انرویت دی دی رایت ویگر سترم دی کن گو انرویت دی اسی نور هاور در از ای سنفرین اوورلاب این آرترامل دیسپیشن آرتر هاستر دیس انرویتی با ویزو افرنس این دن دی ونتریل مایکاردیم کن اوزی انرویتی با پرسپیدمیک لین now humoral and now let's move on to the humoral effects so the, the humoral everything is a vasodilator remember that and the only vasoconstrictors are the ones in this uh, synonym on the acronym VAF so the vasoconstrictors are going to be well E is going to be the endothelin F is going to be our beautiful uh, our beautiful uh, free norepinephrine epinephrine A is going to be angiotensin system and V is going to be uh, V is going to be the vasopressin the main one. So vasopressin is going to be the main constrictor. But let me start off with the uh, the endothelium. Endothelium is also part of the vasoconstrictor. They have a numerous more effects, especially on pulmonary causes of bronchoconstriction. And what this is when this is really endothelium is going to be released when there is going to be a, in response to bleeding and to response to a damaged blood vessel. And norepinephrine. I mean, uh, this causes an inotropic effect, which constricts the coronary arteries, increases AMP, free nor norepinephrine, epinephrine. These are going to bind to the beta one adrenoceptor. Uh, beta 1 receptors in the heart and the beta 1 and beta 2 on the vessels and these are going to call these are going to in these hormones these circulate to all areas of the body beta 1 on the heart and these are going to be sympathetic to medulla they cause the release of norepinephrine epinephrine to the blood and then the adrenal system is a very important and um, uh, receptor this is going to be due to the decrease in renal perfusion this causes increase in ADH increase in vaso it causes a, a increase in ADH increase in aldosterone increase in vasoconstriction increase in total peripheral resistance increase in the um, uh, sodium in intake increase in body fluids and increase in the sodium um, sodium transporters in the kidney increase in sodium uh, absorption increases aldosterone uh, and it also increases ADH uh, EMP and ADH vasopressin um, one of the main things I forgot to start mention about endothelin is the increased amount of uh, ANP, norepinephrine causes the increased amount of uh, ANP, and now the vasopressin is the main one. The anterior neurotic uh, peptide, these are uh, so synthesized, secreted, and released from the arterial myocytes, and when they're released from the arterial myocytes, they can cause a vasodilation, so therefore uh, dilating um, the blood, the, the vascular the vasodilation, and what happens over here, they, they dilate veins, that means increase in venous, uh, venous compliance. This decreases central venous pressure. Uh, when it decreases central venous pressure, it decreases the amount of contractibility, decreases heart rate, and uh, decreases ventricular cardiac output, decreases preload, also dilates our arteries, and it causes systematic resistance and decreases the pressure. The main thing was the, the, the vasopressin, most powerful, um, Venous constriction. The key points you guys need to remember is that it is in response to hypotension and hypovolemia, hypovolemia, hypotension, and it also is when angiotensin system is going to be released. Then ADH is also going to be released. And how does the hypovolemia work? Well, it, it basically works like same thing. It gets receptors from baroreceptors, chemoreceptors. It goes to the what do you call it the. Um, uh, it go, goes in response to the uh, uh, tractus solitaris in the medulla, sends me for uh, tractus solitaris, go to the tractus solitaris in the nuclei, and it controls the release of ADH, causes hypovolemia, decrease in fire rate, and of arterial stress receptors lead to ADH release. So, guys, this is the whole thing neuron humoral um, control. If you guys like this, please do leave a like. I'll be releasing more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.